For centuries, men and women have been using STEM to change the world. Arguably, mankind's greatest ever invention, the wheel, the direct result of the principles of STEM. And literature throughout history are examples of how these principles have led to great innovations. In 1951, at the age of just 32, Betty Graham laid down the stepping stones to erasing mistakes we thought were forever set in ink. In 1976, aged just 21, Steve Jobs stood in his parents' home in Christ Drive, Los Altos, California, and placed a piece of technology into the hands of millions. In 1998, aged just 25, Larry Page answered every question we've ever had, and in 2004, Mark Zuckerberg stood in his Harvard College dorm and connected the world online. So what is STEM? This wonderful term came out of the US a few years ago and has been used to combine the academic disciplines of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics for the purpose of education. But it's more than just the bringing together of subject areas. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of learning. It's the reason we have phones in our pockets, electric cars in our roads, and people playing guitar live on Facebook from space. It's the addressing of real social, economic, and environmental problems, and the ability to form solutions and answers for these problems. However, when we combine these subjects, real life learning, the meaning of each individual subject changes. Science is no longer just about crazy looking scientists with mad looking beakers. It's the study of the natural world. Technology is no longer just about smartphones and robots. It's any product we can create to solve a problem. Engineering is no longer just engines and rockets. Rather, it evolves into a design process we can use to solve problems. And maths. Oh, lovely, lovely maths. It's no longer just a boring exam subject we drill into reluctant students, but rather a vibrant language. A language of numbers, shapes, and possibilities. STEM focuses on everyday problems and issues, and students benefit from the addressing of real social, economic, and environmental problems, and they enjoy getting the opportunity to come work through solutions. This is engineering design process. I'm sure all of you have seen it, being teachers. I hope you have anyway. Um, so, what are the, how does STEM empower today's youth? Let's look at some of the principles for engineering design, or the methods of STEM education, may I say. Address is a real-world problem is driven by an engineering design process, incorporates science and maths, involves students in teamwork, multiple approaches and different possible solutions for a problem, uses inquiry-based teaching and learning approach, involves innovation, entrepreneurship and creativity, and includes the construction of a process or prototype. Now we are taking the student into real life learning and getting them to apply a thought process to every problem they will encounter through life. We must never underestimate the power of our youth. In August 2014, just before my 16th birthday, I founded the first Digital Youth Council in the world. I brought together some of the brightest and most innovative young people from all across Ireland to share ideas, to influence policy, to eat pizza, and ensure a generation got the opportunity to get involved in STEM. Over the past two years, I've had the absolute pleasure of dealing and working with some of the most talented young people this world has to offer. Young people who want to combat global issues, who are trying to build life-saving technology, design life-changing apps, who are trying to have a meaningful impact in this world from a young age using STEM. STEM teaching should allow students to become fully involved in a hands-on learning exploration. Learning through STEM must be an open-ended process. Students must be encouraged to work together, to share ideas, to communicate. In 2014, three young members of the Digital Youth Council of Ireland, Kira, Sophie and Emer, won the Google Science Fair with their project that investigated the effects of bacteria on plant germination. Their objective was to use the bacteria to grow crops and ultimately help combat the global food crisis. Everyday work, really, when you think about it. Who doesn't want to combat the global food crisis? This project is a prime example of how the principles of STEM can be applied to real-world problems. They use the cornerstones of STEM to identify a problem and create and develop a solution. In this process, the students defined a problem, conducted background research, 
develop multiple ideas and solutions, then test it, evaluate it, and redesign them. Projects like this also encourage students, or also encourage the debate around teaching ethics in STEM. Many students have faced decisions around ecological challenges such as climate change, the pollution of our air, water, and soil, and development challenges such as malnutrition and hunger, and infant mortality, and many other afflictions that shatter the lives of millions of men, women, and children around the world every day. Young students become personally involved in these subjects through research. And although they not, might not find ways to reverse global warming or to eliminate starvation, they might. Lewis Braille was only 15 when he invented Braille, Braille reading, and Alexander Graham Bell was only 18 when he invented the telephone. We must never underestimate the power of our youth. Based on my experience, advantages STEM has over many traditional subjects is its current. And because students are allowed to interactively learn, they enjoy moving away from current systems where they're used to learning through repetition and memorizing. They enjoy getting involved, they enjoy getting into a hands-on learning experience. In STEM, failure is just a way of moving forward. Failure is the first step towards success. So, what are the benefits of STEM and STEM education? The fortunate ones of the current generation who are a part of an education system that is embracing STEM will be the leaders, innovators, and scientists of the future. Given the tools of STEM, these young people will not only be able to just understand the challenges ahead, but they'll also be able to shape and change their future. When we look back at some of history's greatest ever inventors, such as the Wright brothers, Alexander Graham Bell, and Thomas Edison, it would have been impossible for them to have seen the full impact of their work. Remember, they didn't have the tools or the knowledge that we have today. I often wonder what they would have been capable of if they did. Somehow between them, they managed to make man fly. They gave us the electric light bulb and the telephone. They came up with these inventions because they felt it was a necessity. And mankind will continue to use STEM to find innovative solutions to ever-emerging problems. The internet has made the world a much smaller place. Research can be done mainly online, and there's a wealth of knowledge and information available at the touch of a button. The youth of today, who are, let's face it, the most technologically advanced generation, don't just have the opportunity to communicate, but to learn, to share ideas, and to build a bigger and better future for themselves. STEM has led us on a journey from Stone Age man's basic tools and weapons to where we are today. The next step needs to be the widespread introduction of a curriculum in place that makes STEM a mainstream subject that we can use to test students on what they have learned. The European Young Scientist is a great example of this. Is anyone familiar with the European Young Scientist, the competition? No? Right, now I've got a really big job ahead. <laughs> the European Young Scientist was an idea that they came up with to encourage European students to get involved in STEM. So the students get involved firstly by coming up with a science project. They get the science project and they participate at a national level. Once they participate at the national level, the winners go on to compete at a European level. Very simple, they come up with the idea, they put a project together, they display it and get to compete. There's a huge reputation behind this and the honours are huge. Some people have even gone on to have their projects commercially developed and received huge recognition. Anyone recognise this man here? Some of you have probably used this service. So he won the 41st BT Young Scientist back in 2005 in Ireland. His name is Patrick Collison, and Patrick Collison went on to found a company called Stripe with his brother, John Collison, and the business now has a valuation of around $9 billion. All after they won the BT Young Scientist. It's crazy when you think about it. By mapping out the progression through STEM education, student skills can be gradually developed. Companies such as Lego offer STEM starter packs for schools. Similar methods need to be introduced to bring the learning process to the next stage with STEM. Science experiences make the subject more practical and easier to learn. Do you all agree? Yeah? There's no reason why the same can't be done with STEM, and a subject that can be taught, understood, and developed. The current education system. Although I've told you some fairy tale STEM stories of myself and Patrick and some other amazing people, please know that I'm not worth $9 billion, um, just to not put myself in the same category as Patrick. But I've told you some amazing stories, but I feel obliged to address the reason why these stories are in short supply. 
Every day, as classes start all around the world, we turn away the ideas of that C student sitting in the back row, the D student sitting front and center, and that the innovations that are A students sitting up the front. Why, you ask? Because we force them to be a part of a system that exists only to test, to test the narrow range of skills and competencies, or to explain it in a simpler form, we judge fish on their ability to climb trees and monkeys on their ability to swim. It's crazy when you think about it. And I spent the last 14 years being a part of this system, being one of those students. I've been that student in the back row who struggled with something, but yes, I've had great ideas, and I'm not blowing my own horn. I know my ideas are good, and I stand by my ideas, but I've never had the opportunity to show them to the world inside the classroom. But when I left, I've had the opportunity. I've been given the chance to show my ideas, but not every student is lucky enough. They haven't had the opportunity to pursue their dreams outside the classroom. But we have the opportunity to change that. We have the opportunity to encourage education to be what it should be, the lighting of a spark, not the filling of a bucket. The world needs forward thinkers. With an ever-expanding population and limited resources, our planet must be managed in a sustainable way. This is no doubt a challenge. STEM empowers youth to ask the questions and to find the answers in a way only young people can, with an open mind and a fresh perspective. Worldwide youth play a crucial role in educating their peers and creating positive change. We can be a part of this by educating and motivating these young people to share their vision. By the year 2025, there will be over 7.7 .7 million STEM jobs in Europe. By teaching STEM, we wouldn't be only giving students the opportunity to solve real-world problems. We'd also be giving them the opportunity to maybe take one of these jobs in the future. And I'd even go a step further and say, we might even give them the opportunity to add another 10 or 10,000 or another million jobs to this list when they come up with the next life-changing piece of technology, app, invention, cure, whatever it might be. We have the opportunity to give them that chance. In 20 years' time, we could have eliminated the planet's resilient reliance on fossil fuels, eliminated the world's hunger, reversed the effects of climate change, and started to populate Mars. But it won't be done unless we open our eyes and open our minds to recognize the power of youth and the value of empowerment through STEM. Thank you very much.